Amen. You must believe that God has raised Jesus from the grave. That right now, Jesus is alive. And is in this service. Those are things we must believe. Why is he in this service? Because we are gathered in his name. So he said, we are two or three. This is more than three. One, two, three, four, five. We have met the divine threshold for the Lord to be here. He's here. And I know that the reason why many people uh, don't really believe that he's here is because we are used to, it's a story, eh? It's a story. He's here. It's just a story. And this is the reason why, whatever I'm teaching is the reason why Christianity is powerless. Christianity only becomes powerful when you believe that Jesus is alive. Otherwise, there is no difference between your religion and another religion. The thing that gives us life and power and vibrancy is the fact that the one we trust has already overcome the grave. This is where the power is. That we are worshipping a living Jesus that can demonstrate to the world that he is alive. So, whatever we are taking to the world, Hallelujah. I said whatever we are taking to the world is a living faith. Is a faith that should be demonstrated so when it comes to whether Jesus is alive or not there are four things that people uh, four categories of people number one category of people there are those who do not believe at all that Jesus resurrected they don't believe at all now in the book of Matthew chapter 28 so category number one is that those, even when they hear about Jesus resurrecting, they say, ah, come on. There is nothing like that that ever happened. Now in the book of Matthew chapter 28 from verse 11, this is what we read. Now, when they were going, behold, some of the guards, some of the guards went into the city and told the leading priests what had happened. Now, they are just talking about these are the guards that were guarding the tomb. Then the angel came, rolled away the stone. Jesus came out. The Bible says they were, they were afraid. Now, they have seen the resurrection. But you see, they had been given a job to guard the tomb. But then Jesus has come out of the tomb. Now, these guards went into the city they told the priest exactly what had happened they said by the way when we were guarding the tomb there was a great earthquake the angel of the lord descended from heaven came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it they told the priest that the countenance of this angel was and his and his clothing was white as snow they gave a complete account of what had happened it's like you being uh, told to take care of the compound and then some thirst come and then now uh, you go and say Le let me tell you uh, this is actually what has happened that man that you put in the grave uh -uh, angels came with there was an earthquake the stone was rolled away and is is out now look at verse 12 when they when they told the priests the religious people the bible says that a meeting with the elders was called this thing of elders started kitambo the meeting with the elders was called and they decided to do what to give the soldiers a large bribe verse 13 they told the soldiers you must say jesus disciples came during the night while we were sleeping while they were even supposed to be sleeping while we were sleeping and they stole his body verse 14 if the governor hears about it we will defend you 
we will stand with you so you won't get into trouble verse 15 so the girls did what accepted the bribe and said what they were told to say look at this the conclusion of that verse their story spread widely among the jews and they still and they still tell it to today are you aware that in israel the very physical birthplace of jesus there are many of those people who do not believe that jesus is the messiah they don't believe they don't believe he's the messiah they are waiting for the messiah and they still did not believe that jesus rose from the dead there are people today who believe that was a fabrication they believe this story soldiers were bribed their body was taken at night the man never came out of the grave somebody say category number one and those who don't believe they believe this story of the soldiers of the guards of the body of jesus christ being stolen at night they don't believe that he resurrected and that he is alive Number two, Matthew chapter 28, verse 16. So the first category are those who don't believe he resurrected, that this resurrection is a story that was just given, that the body of Jesus was stolen at night, and, and they don't tell us where they took the body. Maybe they say they went and hid the body somewhere. And so they say he didn't resurrect. And the Bible says that until today, until today, there are those who still believe that story. Number two, Matthew 16, 28, verse 16 to 17. The, then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. Verse 17. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some of them did what? They doubted. They doubted. So, number one, there are those who completely say it didn't happen. But then there are also those who actually saw him, but they didn't believe he's the one. They were doubting. And they were saying, Anakaka yeye lakini. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to filter. You know, when Jesus resurrected, he had a different body. So tell that young lady, filter is not starting now. He had a different countenance. Somebody say filter. Eh? He looked different. His clothes were different. They were not the kind of clothes he used to wear. And so he was different. So they saw, and that's why today, there are people who doubt. When they hear that Jesus is alive, there are those who doubt. Oko hivi hivi. They saw him after resurrection, but they died. They doubted. Not all of them. The Bible says some doubted. Number three. In the book of Luke chapter 24 Luke chapter 24 Now listen to this This is very interesting Let's begin to read from verse 1 I, like, I love to read the scriptures And please let's go one by one From verse 1 we go all the way 
to verse 11. Then we read NLT. It's on the screen. One, two, go. But very early on Sunday morning like this, the women went to the tomb taking spices they had prepared. Verse 2. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So resurrection has already happened. Verse 3. So when they went in, but they did not find the body of Jesus because he's already come out from the grave. Verse 4. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling clothes. Verse 5. The women were terrified and bowed their face to the ground. Then the men asked, Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? And these men are angels. They said in verse 6, He is not risen. He is not here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, verse 7, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of of sinful men and be crucified and that he would rise again on the third day verse 8 then they remembered that he had said this verse 9 so they rushed back from the tomb to tell the 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened verse 10 it was Mary Magdalene Joanna Mary the mother of James and several other women who told the apostles what had happened now let's look at verse 11 so they have seen that they're telling him he's alive but let's look, look, look at verse 11 he says what but the story about resurrection sounded like so category number three there are people when you talk about resurrection to them it is nonsense what is nonsense in kikamba eh? Stoli is a pus. Is that how it is? Stoli is a pus. Can you imagine they are testifying about the resurrection of Jesus and they are to, to some people, this story about Jesus resurrecting sounds like nonsense. That's why there are people, they look at you saying that you are saved, you believe in Jesus. This is the reason why many people think believers are confused. How can you say you believe in somebody like Jesus? Who is Jesus? You say he resurrected. Where? How? That's why the entire thing about believing Jesus sounds like nonsense. And the Bible says that the preaching of the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Do you see why it ends up sounding like nonsense how did he resurrect how can you die and come out you know then people easily believe the story of the soldiers they say after all what the soldiers said makes sense how can i just believe that he that that he's resurrected how it is easier to believe that his body was taken out than to believe that he's resurrected so category number three when it comes to the resurrection are those who dismiss the entire uh, uh, message of resurrection they say it is nonsense they didn't believe it The amplified version says verse 11 amplified it says that this sounded like an idol tale idol tale can you see brackets eh? what is an idol tale madness the entire story sounds like like the story of a somebody who is mad feigned things to feign is to pretend is to eh? not real feigned things and then you see in brackets what nonsense 
And to make it worse, this story was being told by some women, and there are people who will not believe women. <laughs> they walked around and said, This is the reason why in any church, men are few. Men believe that, I'm telling you, you look for any church, men are few. Ladies are more. Because ladies are the ones who saw Jesus resurrect fast. Men are kichwangumu. They were told by these ladies. That's why they called it nonsense. They sat in the gates. Mtani. To hear your story. Me wife amekuja na story njini ya upuzi sana. Atiata wewe. Niko nafikina ni mipeke yangu. Story gani ya asi ati ati ati. Adiyo yesu watu wali muona. Wanacheka. Na mbia ibu ni patie nare hapo. Wada yu story. They said this is a nonsense story. So when people dismiss your faith as nonsense, don't be shocked. Whatever we are believing, being branded nonsense is not starting with us. That's why when, when, we, when, we, when we love Jesus, when you are celebrating, when you are dancing, when you go out in the crusade, when you say I'm born again, when you say praise the Lord, some people think this is a lot of nonsense. In fact, they look at you, they see you look like, some people say you look like you're a very educated man, you're enlightened. What, what is wrong? It's as if if you're born again, there's something wrong. Because it, is, it was nonsense. So you need to know why we will always have more ladies in the church than men. Now men, tafadhali. Eh? Going to heaven is not by gender. Glory to God. I said it's not by Sasa nyinyi mutabaki tu mutabaki tu uko mumebaki jehanamu Believe I said believe I said believe Somebody say I believe Number 4 category When it comes to resurrection is in Acts chapter 2 verse 31 Acts chapter 2 and verse 31 New King James Version Tafadali it says like this this is Peter giving testimony and he says he foreseeing this spoke concerning the resurrection of Christ that his soul was not left in hates or in hell, nor his, did his flesh see corruption. Verse 32 says like this. This Jesus, somebody say this Jesus, God raised up, of which we are all witnesses. So number four category, Nikina Peter, you do, remember those Kina Peter, James, John? They, they were eyewitnesses of the resurrection of Jesus. They saw him, they spoke to him, they ate with him, and they didn't just see him for a day. The Bible says for a period of 40 days, Jesus. When he resurrected for 40 days that's more than a month he continuously appeared to them so by the time peter and the rest of the disciples are starting to talk about jesus they are talking about jesus they say we are witnesses of him why in fact the bible says that they were eyewitnesses I witnessed. That's what it came where it came from. I witnessed. I witnessed. Glory to God. 
And so Peter is among us those that did what? That witnessed. Is it making sense to you? Is it making sense? All right. Now, remember where I began. Without believing that Jesus, I like, remember Acts chapter 2 verse 32. Let's say it one more time loudly. Go. This, one more time. This Jesus, God raised up, of which we are all witnesses. In other words, Peter was saying, to us this is not nonsense. To us we don't believe that story that his body was taken away. We are not doubting because we saw him and we are witnesses of the fact that Jesus is alive. He said now we are witnesses of his resurrection and of his power. Glory be to God. Now let me show you something in the next few minutes every time jesus uh anytime somebody experienced the resurrected jesus and went and testified i have seen him jesus would always appear i'll say that again the spirit of glory and of christ rest upon you you are of a quick understanding you catch revelation quickly and you see spiritual things listen every time the disciples would go out and testify that jesus has resurrected he is alive he would appear Whenever they would go and begin to say, I have seen him. He's not in the grave. He's come out. He's alive. Jesus would appear. And those people that they were testifying to about his res resurrection would see him. So that they not only believed that Jesus was alive because of the verbal witness they would also say whatever you are saying we have also seen him somebody say we are together, we are together. now this is what is lacking in the church we are testifying of a resurrected jesus but people are not seeing him yet when they testified about jesus appearing no jesus resurrection there was always an accompaniment of physical manifestation so make this statement with me because we are going somewhere say every time they testified of jesus resurrection he appeared every time they said jesus is not in the grave he has come out of the grave every time they spoke like that immediately he would appear every time they spoke jesus is not in the grave we went we found the grave open he would appear every time they say hey the grave is empty he would appear now let me show you a few examples to that effect Matthew chapter 28 I just want to show you that every time they'll say Jesus has resurrected he would appear appear now Matthew chapter 28 verse 1 after now after the sabbath as the first day of the week began to dawn mary magdalene and the other mary came to see the tomb verse 2 quickly tafadali verse 2 behold there was a great earthquake for an angel of the lord descended from heaven 
came and rolled back the stone from the door and did what? And sat on it. Verse 3. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing was white as snow. The angel. Verse 4. And the guards shook for fear of him and they became like dead men. Verse 5. But the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are seeking Jesus who was crucified. Listen to the message of the angel of verse 6. He is not for he is risen as he said. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. So the angel is testifying of Jesus resurrection. Are we together until that point? Now look at verse 8. Then the angel said to the women go quickly and do what and tell his disciples somebody say pastor i'm with you by faith because some of you are with me by faith but it's it's okay somebody say we are with you by faith <laughs> go quickly somebody say go quickly somebody say go quickly and tell his disciples what are you supposed to tell the disciples he is risen from the dead and indeed he's going before you into galilee there you will see him Amen. not just you will hear about him you will see him behold i have told you look at verse 8 so they went out hallelujah they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word what word that he is risen from the dead that's the word look at somebody tell them that's the word, that the word. hallelujah Amen. look at somebody and tell them it's time to change the message, to, the message. to the original message, the original message. He, is he is not in the grave jesus is alive, jesus is alive. he's risen from, he's risen from the grave hallelujah Amen. praise the lord the message is not about who is bewitching you the message is he's risen from the grave he is alive Amen. hallelujah Amen. the message is not you're going to get a car you can get a car if you're an unbeliever the message is he's risen from the dead by then unbelievers are better cars than you but it's gonna change <laughs> you know people think the faith is about having cars you can have cars closed without being saved you don't want to say amen because you, you, you want some spirit. How many non-believers do you know who have houses? You don't need to be saved to have a nice house. You need to be saved to have a nice house. No. But you need to get, you need to be saved to have eternal life. Riches cannot secure eternal life jesus does they went and told his disciples we're going to come back on this sometime told his disciples behold as they went to tell his disciples listen as they went what happened jesus met them he said rejoice then they came and saw him they beheld him and worshiped at his feet look at verse 10 then jesus said to them don't be afraid go tell my brethren to go to galilee and there they will see me Amen. every time people testified about his resurrection he appeared every time people said jesus is not in the grave he's alive he appeared he manifested i want to put a comma here we'll pick up in the next service the question that is in somebody's mind is this now 
Pastor, you're teaching about his resurrection and you're saying every time we talk about his resurrection, he does what? He appears. So how does that apply to me now? How does that apply to today? That was them. He would appear. They saw him. And, and this is just one. I have, I have a number of examples to show you that every time somebody went and said, hey, Jesus is not in the grave. He is out of the grave. He appeared? He appeared. Today, I am teaching the same Jesus that is not in the grave. He is out of the grave. The question that we want to answer before we pray is this. Then how is he appearing today? I want you to turn on these fans. We have some fans here, so you can turn them on. Then uh, team behind there, you can turn on those Kidogo. Just put Kidogo speed. See, that's better, eh? Yeah. When we testify about his resurrection, he does what? He appears. To us, what does that mean? What does it mean? Listen, every time we talk about Jesus, resurrection, he wants to appear. And in our days, it's possible for you to see the physical Jesus like Thomas saw him. Because they told Thomas, we have done what? We have seen him. Thomas says, I will not believe. Then Jesus appeared. Somebody say, every time you testify, he's out of the grave, he must appear. Why must he appear? To demonstrate and confirm that he is alive. He has to appear. Now, how does he appear in our time? Because I am praying and I prayed that this week, this week, he will appear to somebody. He has to appear. You see, there is no way you can say he's alive and then nobody sees him. Can you imagine if all these people are saying, well, he, the grave is empty, he is resurrected, and nobody saw him. Then, then we will be doubting this story. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, supposing there is somebody who has not come to church today. They have not come. Then you meet with them on Wednesday or Thursday. You said, by the way, pastor was in church on Sunday. We saw him. I was in the service. Then they say, no. How can, I, how can you prove? Then they meet with Alex. Alex is saying, I saw him. Pastor was in church. Then they meet with him, saying, I saw him. You see, you cannot discount the witnesses of different people saying the same thing. And when Jesus rose from the grave, it is not one person who testified. Many people testified of his resurrection. They said we saw him. They were giving an account that was not contradicting each other. And he was appearing. So how does that apply to us today? When you believe that Jesus has come out of the grave, the Bible says he will appear. And you know how he appears? You need to write this down. He appears to us in signs and wonders. That's how he's appearing in our days. He is appearing to us in signs and wonders. He is appearing by demonstrating that he's not in the grave anymore, that he's alive. Jesus Christ is alive today. And, and how, when they testified he's not in the grave, he's come out of the grave and he would appear and they will see him. How does it apply to us today? When we testify just like them, go out into the world and say, you know what, believe in Jesus, he died, he was buried, but now he's alive. Then the next thing that must follow 
is a manifestation of the supernatural in signs and wonders because he must still appear but now he's not appearing in bodily form he's appearing in miracle signs and wonders that's why he said in the book of Mark, he said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. As they went testifying of his resurrection, he was working together with them, demonstrating that he's alive. That's why he appears. He appears in signs and wonders. He appears in what the Bible says, I'm going to give you this in the next service. He appears in what the Bible says convincing proofs somebody say convincing proofs somebody say convincing proofs now let's read Acts chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 now you can play 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 in a way that we can hear uh, play now we can't even hear you eh? The former treatise, the former account, I made of Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach, until the day he was taken up, after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandment to the disciples or to the apostles whom he had chosen. Verse 3, to whom he also presented himself alive somebody say presented himself alive after his suffering how did he present himself alive by many infallible proofs being seen by them how was he being seen by infallible proofs being seen by them for how long for 40 days speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of god i want you to see the same verse in amplified version verse 3 amplified version because you are getting ready to pray he says to them also he showed himself alive he showed that he's alive how did he show that he's alive by a series somebody say series of many convincing demonstrations and questionable evidences and infallible proofs convincing demonstrations hallelujah convincing demonstrations infallible proofs jesus is alive how is he demonstrating the fact that he's no longer in the grave by convincing demonstrations and questionable evidences and infallible proofs that he's alive to those that believe that Jesus is not in the grave he appears and how does he appear by convincing demonstrations and questionable evidences and infallible proofs glory be to God hallelujah I want you to rise up on your feet I want you to rise up on your feet Worship him quickly, quickly. And I want you to lift up your hands, everyone, everyone. For a moment, I want you to worship he who is alive. Worship him. Knowing that he's alive to receive your worship. The Lord is about to appear right now. Right now he shall appear. You will see him. I said right now he will appear. You will see him. You will see him. The spirit of glory. 
blood of Christ is resting upon us. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yikadabo zoshe daboza. Yikadabo zoshe lalaboza. Jesus is alive. I said Jesus is alive. Amen. Right now. Yes. Everywhere. In this sanctuary. I declare right now by faith in this Jesus that died rose from the grave I declare right now a demonstration of the fact that Jesus is no longer in the grave I declare right now to those that are in the service those that are watching I declare manifestation of the glory of Jesus I declare miracles I declare signs and wonders. I declare living proofs in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. I declare the power of Jesus in this service. If you are in this service today and you are not well, it doesn't matter what is going on in your body. If you are in pain right now, in pain right now, Put your hand where there is sickness. Jesus is alive. I told you, when you hear he's alive, he must appear. Anybody right now that is not well, even you that is watching, put your hand, put your hand. I said, put your hand where there is sickness and receive your healing now. From Jesus, I command every pain to leave. Now, in Jesus' name, I command sicknesses to go. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every disease, infirmity, leave. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Receive your miracles. I say, receive your miracles. As you are worshiping, you are there and you need a miracle. As you are worshiping, come to the altar. Jesus is alive. I said as you are worshiping, come to the altar, Jesus is alive. As you are worshiping, come to the altar, Jesus is alive. Yes, 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 yes,
glory to God. If you are there and you need prayer, come, I will pray for you. Jesus is alive. Just come and stand there. You will have a testimony. Even if right now, right now, as you are listening, even if right now, you are sick now, you have pain, come now. It doesn't matter what it is. We are not, we are not talking religion. If this Jesus is alive, let's see him. Let's see him. I said, let's see him. Is there anybody here? You have pain right now. Anybody standing here? Come, what's, where is the pain? What's the problem? Is it there now? How long has it been going on? Eh? One week. Stand there. Anybody else? You need prayer? What's the problem? Somebody say he's alive. he's alive. And if he's alive, he must appear. He must appear. If he can't appear, it's fake. I'm telling you, if he can't appear, he's not alive. But he is alive. He is alive. I command the headaches to go now in Jesus' name. You will testify that Jesus Christ is alive. And by your healing, right now, I command healing virtue there. It's flowing in you now. It's flowing now. It's flowing now. It's flowing now. Yes. I command the stomach to be healed. Yes, be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Oh yes. You're okay. You are fine. You are fine. You are fine. Come on, somebody give a hand clap to Jesus. You are healed. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. You are healed. The rest of you lift up your hand. You are healed in Jesus' precious name. Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. You're healed. You're healed. You're healed. Just cover her. It's okay. You are healed. Unaenda shule saa hii ama uendi? Naenda mwezi wa 9. Unahitaji pesa ngapi? Your healer, 
I send my word and heal your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. Imini Buana, Aku Ponya. Mimi ni bwana mponya ji ni tumane no lango upone mimi ni bwana mponya ji you are the Lord that He led me. You are the Lord, my healer. You send your word and heals my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You are the Lord, yeah, that He led me. You are the Lord, my healer. You send your word and heals my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You are the Lord, yeah. You are the Lord that He led me. You are, you are. My healer, you send your word and heals my disease. Oh, you are the Lord, hey, my healer. I am the Lord, I am the Lord that he led thee. I am the Lord, my healer. Praise the Lord. It's okay. Praise the Lord. Some of you are on this altar, not because of anything physical, but you are dealing with other challenges. Tell this man to come. Come. pray for you. You know there are things that don't need prayer. They need what? Counseling. He needs counseling. Lift up your hand. Say Jesus, Jesus I, receive I receive my miracle, my miracle from, you from you that is alive today. Alive today. Father, thank you, Father, thank you for doing for me that which I desire. And right now, in Jesus' precious name, I receive divine intervention, breakthrough in this area of my life. 
Jesus, Jesus. you're alive. alive. You're out of the grave. grave. You continue doing your miracles miracles. in our lives. lives. We receive healing healing. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Open doors. doors. Favor Favor. in Jesus name. Now with your hands lifted, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for these that are on this altar. This is not a show. This is not an experiment. This is not a trial. We are talking about Jesus you raised from the grave. And he appeared to many people. Demonstrating the fact that he is no longer in the grave. He is alive. Now Lord, because of their faith in the message they have had this morning that Jesus is out of the grave. I pray for them now that Lord you will do for them according to their prayer and their desire. I command miracles to happen now. I declare that every kind of divine intervention that you need to actualize your desire is taking place now. Those that need intervention in your finances receive it now in your jaws receive it now in the issues of your life those that need intervention that are standing on this altar say lord i can't even explain what i need lord i pray that you will intervene in each one of them and father as they testify you receive the glory and you receive the praise in jesus mighty name and god's people say it Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Everything we receive from the Lord, we receive by faith. By you coming to this altar and saying, I I trust Jesus. He has intervened in your life. So before you sit down, say with me, Father, thank you. I have my answer. And things are not the same. You have done it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can take your seats in faith in Jesus' name. Now you that are there, you don't need to sit down. Uh, Those of us who are watching, I want us to pray with our online audience. The Lord bless you for staying with us in this service until now. There is information on the screen on how you can send in your tithe your offering into this ministry and i want to appreciate you for standing together with us and being a blessing unto this ministry before you go those of you who are watching this coming wednesday in our midweek service that's also to all of us here how many have received this flyer how many have received this flyer Ashes, you have not given the people. You are not giving these flyers. Why? Where are the flyers actually? Do we have them, Nessie? So why aren't they giving the people? Ichingwa, when someone walks in, you give them the flyer. Okay, let me see. Who doesn't have this? You don't have. It will be easier. Who doesn't have? Who has? Who doesn't care? (laughs) Now listen, this Wednesday in our midweek awakening service, we have not taken communion together for a very long, how many people know that? Very long time. And I'm going to be teaching some things on communion and we're going to be taking communion. So this Wednesday is our remembrance service. Why is it remembrance? Because Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. So this Wednesday, let's gather. It's a full service like this for our remembrance service. Come ready for us to partake communion together and to pray together. So those of you who are watching, if you are not in church today, remember Wednesday is communion service remembrance service and also this wednesday those of us who have been prayed for here 
you will also come with a testimony of what the Lord has done. Because when Jesus Christ is proclaimed to be out of the grave, he must appear. He is the one that demonstrates that he is out of the grave. And so, the Lord bless you that has been part of our online service, keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, and grant you his peace. You are blessed in Jesus' name. And God's people say it. Amen. Amen. All right. We that are here, let us.